Hello, and welcome back to More Moss to the People. This is Asa Nilsson. I am your host. Today, I have a Swede, a fellow Swede with me from Malmö, Sweden, and her name is Jeanette Vinberg. You would say that in English, but in Swedish, it is Jeanette Vinberg. So I wanted you to understand the American version first. So I was telling her in advance that how you pronounce uh, Jeanette, Jeanette in English is different than Janet. And... Uh, <laughs> These are all new things for the for the Swedes, maybe, to come into this market, the American market, which we talked about before we actually got to go recording today. But here, welcome. Welcome today. Welcome to more most of the people. Jeanette, how are you doing today? I'm fine. Thank you. Good. How are you doing? Oh, my God. I'm excellent. I'm excellent. <laughs> the weather is beautiful. Summer is yeah. almost here. Yeah. True, yeah. true. Yes, yes. So welcome to my podcast. I was excited to have you on. I've met you only virtually, like most of the people today, unfortunately, but maybe one day we can. Yes, of be, course. Yeah, of course we're not we that will. far away. <laughs> we're not no. that far away from each other. No. <laughs> no. So I met you through another friend, uh, um, Josephine Warner, who is in Switzerland, another Swede that lives in Switzerland. And sure. I I started uh, to listen to her because you were on her Josephine Meets. And I was like, oh, she seems really nice and interesting. And what you do for work, I thought was fascinating. And that's what attracted me first because it was so different. And I was like, oh, that's nice. But then more importantly, I liked who you were as a person. I liked what you stood for because you actually do stand up for something. And yeah. that's uh, for me as um, the reason I started this movement, the podcast movement of More Moss was to have conversations with people that are doing things in the world that maybe isn't like everybody else or is doing it their own way and aren't ashamed or embarrassed to do so. And um, for for you, for your life, you are a dating coach for your career. You're a dating coach, you're a matchmaker, you've worked with PT, physical therapy, massage. You've done a lot of uh, very cool and interesting things. And we're gonna get into that, but I would love for you to introduce yourself and tell us who you feel you are in the world today. Who I feel I'm in the world today. <laughs> That's yeah. beautiful. Who ask. do you feel? <laughs> no, I don't know. That's a good reflection. I'm I'm a dating coach, yes. I'm coaching people. I'm almost 50 years old. Mm -hmm. I live in Malmö, but I work towards everywhere. Yeah. And I'm a mom of two mm -hmm. beautiful children that is grown up and out of the house. So mm -hmm. My son lives in Barcelona and my daughter lives in Palma mm. and my boyfriend lives in Switzerland. So <laughs> I'm traveling around uh, to my family. It's beautiful to have it like this, even if it's also kind of hard sometimes, but it gives me perspective of so many cultures and people. I see so much in this and I'm open in this and I learn from my children and for my boyfriend. So it gives me a lot to my work. So I would say I'm I'm kind of a free woman today trying to coach this into others as well as love. Mm. Ooh, free woman teaching yeah. that today. Tell me, tell me more about that. Tell me what free woman teaching that to others. What does that look like? Because I think that we are trying to control so many things in life. We need to control many things in life. Of course we do, like bills and houses and work and stuff. But also we are trying to control emotions. And I think when you come to the point when you don't do that and when you realize that you cannot own people and that they have to be with you from the free will, then you learn to to love and love yourself and to get love because it's difficult to be loved. It's really, really much easier to love someone and to feel love and be loved. That's scary. That's really scary. Then you give away your heart. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I think this is the point I'm trying to coach to all of my clients also to set people free somehow mm -hmm. uh, and be in your own core. But that is easy to say. It takes a journey, an inner journey to do this and acceptance, true acceptance. 
And this is the point I've got to. I have much more to learn also for myself, much, mm-hmm. much more to learn. But doing this and also where my kids are and my boyfriends are and seeing so much in this, seeing and meeting so much people, uh, it's nice. It's really a nice living. What do you see? Because, I mean, everyone wants love. Everyone wants love. Maybe in the way only in the way that they know what love is or what love looks like to them right i mean we all have our own experiences we come to the table uh, especially in the um the the intimate relationships the love relationships like partners or what have you um but the the interesting thing that the control that we want to try to control someone or control outcomes or um if i if i say that they're supposed to do this then they're supposed to do this which of course i I would know because I've done it for years. <laughs> I've tried that for yeah. years and it really, yes. was not, not all that. I think successful. every, I think everyone has, I think everyone has. Though. I don't know. Yeah. I have no idea because yeah. sometimes I feel like it's only me, <laughs> yeah. but, but the work, the work of helping somebody to feel free inside themselves, because right. I think that the love journey is always about ourselves. It's never about how we can love somebody else because how it doesn't matter how we can love somebody else if we cannot reflect back and love us love myself right i can't love you if i don't love me so then how how do you as a as a as a woman as a nearly 50 year old woman with two beautiful children living all over the world and your boyfriend living in switzerland you know, getting to see all these different kinds of people, do you see any kind of kind of like patterning, like where like humanity is kind of like, like similarities in humans? Do you see anything like that? Yeah, I do. And this is the thing. This is the core thing that when we make boundaries, Hmm. we always make boundaries to get a transaction. (laughs) This is the main thing that I always see the transaction thing. If I do this, I get this. If I say this, you will react this way. But the boundaries is about ourselves. So I have to say to myself, this is not for me or this is for me. Not thinking you will act and react in either way. It doesn't matter. It's not about you. It's about me. Mm -hmm. This is the thing I see similarity in everyone. Transaction. We want transactions in everything. Mm, Yeah. That is, um, that's a really unpleasant thought. Because that's, uh, it also, you know, that brings me, gosh, that's so many, that can touch on so many different points. You know, if it's a, a transactional lifestyle, I mean, and how how hard we work to achieve something or to have the purpose. Like if I have a, a really great job, if I'm making a ton of money, then I have a purpose. Or if I have a, a love relationship, if I do this for you, you've got to do this for me. I'm like, it's, that's sad. <laughs> it's so sad, sad because you know if it's if it's a transaction when it's we're talking about work mm. then it's good work mm. is about delivering and getting paid somehow mm. it's always like right this. the giving give yeah work work take it is but when it comes to love and also my clients comes to me they always say to me how can i get him to love me more or she doesn't matter <laughs> gender is not and i doesn't matter gender okay. here. but how can i do this to get this how can i act to have this response mm-hmm. and i always say why is everything about the other person all mm-hmm. the time mm-hmm. it's not and mm-hmm. this this will destroy it but if you can own up to yourself and say you know what without putting guilt on someone you say you know what this is not working for me or this is my need this is what i want how do you feel about it mm. instead of saying you did not or why do you not yeah. or you should have had yeah. this is also something i see similar in everyone that comes mm. to me and almost everyone is coming to me with a point as how do i get this how mm. can i have this how mm. can i get a man how can i get a woman how can i get a boyfriend mm. girlfriend mm. whatever mm. You need to just be in the energy, not yeah. asking to get, you will get it anyhow. <laughs> this is the thing. This is frustrating to me sometimes <laughs> when I coach because I, but it's a process and it's about attachment styles. It's truly mm. about attachment styles. If you are the anchor, the island, the wave, you know, where are you at in your attachment? Style? So mm-hmm. it's also important, of course. So I don't know anything about that. I haven't, I haven't gone to a dating coach. 
But, <laughs> so, so there's different attachment styles of how we are as human beings in yes, all of our love right. relationships, like in all of our relationships or just like relationship, like love relationships. No, it's in all relationships. You have different attachments that sometimes you have one towards your friends and family and one towards your, uh, your boyfriend, girlfriend, or the one you are dating. And I think every relationship that you have romantically is a projection of your own fears. So if I'm fe- my fear or my wounds are that I don't want to be uh, left or abandoned, then I'm, I'm an, in an insecure attachment style. It, it's called insecure. Mm-hmm. Then I'm al- almost always drawn to the avoidant attachment style because mm-hmm. then I can fight to be loved. And it's like a roller coaster. And I am, I'm, I'm familiar with that from my home, from my programming, from the adults that raised me. Mm-hmm. So this program that you get from, ch- from a child, that is what you will be when you grow up in the, in the romantically relationships, right? So this is difficult because we need to acknowledge it. I'm yeah. personally insecure in my mm-hmm. attachment style. And I'm also drawn to avoidant uh, because then I recognize it. I have to fight to get loved somehow. And right. for me, that's normal. Yeah. Mm, right. And um, yeah, so this is important. This is the core to understand yourself. Well, that's interesting because I haven't um, I haven't heard the, the terminology before, which I, I love learning new things. Is that is that something that um, do you use books for that? I mean, is that like a, do you have any really good books that people can maybe use for tips sure. like to improve sure. themselves or to try to help themselves? Um, yeah, there are tons of books about attachment styles. There is one called The Secret. It's really, really good. It's not The Secret about yeah. law of attraction. There is another book, The Secret. And that is one of the best ones. But there's lots of books about attachment styles. And also we dating coaches. There are dating coaches all over the world. Uh, we always teach this. Always, okay. always, always. This okay. is the core. Yeah. That's the, all right. That's the core piece right there. Well, that's very yeah. good to know because I had no idea. But um, so then maybe you can like, you can send me a couple of like books for tips or something like that, that I can put yes. in the show notes from you. That would be so nice. So. Absolutely. Excellent. Because. You know, I I basically have always had a boyfriend since the day I was born. I was I always had to have a boyfriend because it was always nice. It was fun to have company. It was always like a nice time to have like a relationship. I always that was always my thing. And yeah. so I really haven't spent a lot of time being single in my life. Now I have a lot of friends that use dating sites. Um mm-hmm. like uh the I don't even know what it's called. What is it called? The you're dating apps. Yeah. yeah, the apps, like those apps. Yes. Um, yeah. Is that something that you believe in? Do you think that those are good resources for people? Yes, yeah. absolutely. But here comes the but. Mm-hmm. If, you, <laughs> if you don't understand that arena, don't be in it. Okay. Because people are coming to me telling me, oh, I'm ghosted on the dating apps. No, you are not. You could never be ghosted on a dating app because you have never met that person. So yeah, basically you can be ghosted, but it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So if you are that sensitive, because you don't know who you're speaking to. I can be be speaking to Carl and he ghosts me, but I don't know if that was Carl. I have no clue. That could be someone else. That could be a woman. That could be an old man, young man. I have no clue who it is. Mm, God, that's scary. Because when you are behind the scenes, like you only have a picture and some text, who know who you are? I can only know who you are when I get a video chat or meet you live, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or right. You, who you tell me that you are. <laughs> right. But yeah, so we see that we have one, two persons out of 10, 10 20% scammers out of, oh. in, so that's high. Yeah. Uh, yes. But then we have like eight left that are good ones. Yeah. So still, it's really good platform for also people that is not in the option to be outside. You know, there are lots of people, introverted people, Mm -hmm. anxiety people that finds it really scary to interact. We have people that is locked inside because of, you know, children or they're not being able, they are self-raising or something. Perfect. It's Mm. really good. Yes. So do you... um... I mean, it's a same example in Sweden. I, I believe it's in Stockholm that it's the highest percentage of single people in the entire yeah. world living alone, yeah. like in their own apartments or in their own whatever. With single people, um, do you do you think that 
doing the work really it's it's always about doing the work on the self right i mean looking yeah. at yourself and where you're yeah. at in your life and then accepting other people um as mm. they are also and having a conversation but um do you see like in your work that people want to do the work do they no. do they do they <laughs> no no yeah. unfortunately not uh, some people, of course, do. There are my clients that comes to me and they are willing to do the work, I have to say. Or I tell them, this is how we need to work. Mm -hmm. um, but I think today we, need, we want quick fixes. Yeah, we, we want solutions. <laughs> and there is, yes, we, we are going for that. And also today we are so independent mm -hmm. and free somehow. We change living, we change apartments, we change jobs, countries, partners. We have a serial monogamous today. It's like five to seven years and then we get tired of it and we move on. We don't fight. This is how society is today. It's a little bit easygoing somehow. And deep inside, everyone I talk to, they're so sad about this because everyone wants the core thing, the real thing, and to stay and to fight for their partner. Yet we don't do it. And here is a problem that I think is born from the social media as well. Hmm. as women are getting stronger but that is not a problem that is good but in this dynamic maybe it's different because now we women can manage on our own we don't need men to hmm. provide for us so we are also free now like for yeah, decades ago we couldn't now we can so, so it's also change can let me ask i want to go back to something that you said because maybe mm. i misunderstood the serial monogamy are you that that was for people who are single, people who choose not to be in relationship. Is five to seven years? No, 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 people, no. They are one that are in relationship. They're in it relationship. Only, yes, it uh -huh. lasts about five to seven years okay. today. Okay, 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 okay. And then people yeah. will break up and find somebody else. But yeah, okay, all right, I understand. Yes, because we get tired of it because everything today is so much. Yeah, and well, the we get something new. Yes, we get something new. We change it. Mm -hmm. No problem. I don't get this there. I, I change it. Or it's like we the dopamine today that we get from social media, the likes, mm. everything is about the dopamine. So it's not enough to just be in a boring relationship where everything is the same every day. Mm. So we, we strive for more. Mm. And it's, all, it's like when we are dating, we date five people at the same time. So we get sex from one. We get the deep conversations from one. We get the wine and dine and the gentleman from one. <laughs> It's like watching a five movies at the same time. Oh you gosh. cannot go deeper. Yes. And now when you do that, you have these five people. How can you get all of these qualities into one person? Because you will never get that. No, I couldn't keep this up with is... five people. I, wait, no. I wouldn't want to. <laughs> no. I don't have exactly. enough patience for all that. No. Yeah. <laughs> Love is about a decision. You know, we need to decide. We need to decide. I commit to you. Mm. And then we will work for that mm. together. Both will commit and talk, and and it's about love languages. It's about fight languages. It's about needs and emotions and sex. About everything. But if we just do that and stick with it, that would be good. <laughs> well, if you, I if will you, be more if you, happy. Yeah, if you found somebody that you actually would want to do that with. You know, you just said something I've never heard before because I've heard love languages, but I've never heard of fight languages. Jay Shetty. Uh, I don't oh, know I love Jay know Shetty. That. Oh my gosh, yes. yes. And I don't know if this is something he invented. I don't know, but this is the one I heard it from that uh, there are actually not only love languages, there was also fight languages. And hmm. he says that... Um, love and a relationship is more about the fight languages actually than the love languages because it's about how we deal with a conflict and the mm -hmm. needs in that yeah uh, and this made me think this is interesting because we never talk as you say about fight languages mm -hmm. but this is almost even more important than yeah. love language yeah well you know it's true because i've uh recently i have i've not discovered something about my <laughs> husband and i when we had a little bit of a tiff because we're not typically fighters i don't i'm i'm a very peace person i i need calm i want to make sure that everything is safe and nice and like we can talk about it in the normal you know no screaming nothing like that 
And we had a conversation and then I realized, gosh, it's so rare that we fight. It's like, we don't know how to communicate when we go into a, a disagreement. It doesn't even have to be about anything. Like it was just a conversation about something that we just didn't agree. We didn't, we had to agree to disagree. But the whole point of the conversation yeah. was like how we both acted and reacted. It was like, we were, we were flat, like, what is that called? Like flaggling, like we didn't know how to act or how to be, I guess. But when yeah. everything, then when it's good, then we know. But when, they're, when you're being tested, it's like, ooh, okay, now I have to be different. I'm going to look that up. Jay Shetty's fight fight languages. I don't think he has specific, like in love, love languages, we have yeah. five. Yeah. We have five. But fight languages, I don't think he has made, you know, numbers out of it. It's okay. just talking about, but I don't know about this. I'm, yeah, I, I'll look into it. I haven't, I haven't seen it, but he... I heard it from him mm-hmm. and I reflected on that and yeah. I actually took that from him and I, I coached this because it's really interesting how it is. how you fight. And if I look at me and my boyfriend, we have in distance uh, completely different fight languages, huh. totally. But we have in real life when we meet exactly the same fight language. Oh, that's interesting. Why would it be different, do you think? Because when he is in distant, I'm in the pocket somehow, and he puts me away. Oh, yeah, oh, okay, I'm okay. in the phone. I'm just in the phone. He can just shut me down. Okay. So he not shut me down in a yeah. in a bad negative yeah. way now, but he can just and, take it away. He can yeah. he can just put me back in the pocket. <laughs> but I am I'm more anxious and explosive in distance because then it's even more important to me to solve it now, like a really red person like bam 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 i need to just sort it out Mm -hmm. and he can be like i take this in the evening because now i'm at work and i cannot focus on this so he puts me in the pocket (laughs) until he puts me up in the pocket nobody puts baby in the pocket (laughs) no exactly (laughs) exactly but he when he's in front of me he's exactly the opposite he becomes me you know he says we need to solve it what do you feel how do you feel why do you feel you know? Okay, hey, that's great. Yeah. That's great that he would yeah. say all those, ask all those questions. He always does, but not when I'm in the pocket. <laughs> <laughs> the pocket, you no. get you get resolved later. Okay, oh, that would be yeah. bothersome to me too. <laughs> I don't yeah. want to be in a pocket. Yeah. Huh. Exactly. Well, now tell me, you have you this this is your boyfriend, and you live. He lives in Switzerland, and you're in Sweden, and you have children with um, another person who you say you have a wonderful relationship with and my soulmate. He's yeah. My soulmate. yeah. Yeah. So that's terrific. I think it's so nice that there's, I, I personally, I mean, if you're not in an abusive relationship or somebody's horrible, then I, I'm always a stand for people trying to remain good, you know, have good relationships with their ex people, if that's possible. Um, so yeah. that's, that's really, really terrific that you have that. Do you have, um, when you get when you get clients that come in that want to talk about these types of things, I mean, is it f- for your sake? Is it um, better for like long term? Because I would imagine that this would be like this isn't like a short term fix. This isn't just no, like yeah. an hour conversation. <clears throat> no, I have clients sometimes coming to me. Can you please help me to say to 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 do a really great profile online? So the right pictures to write text is there that is kind of a quick fix you know they just need to how do I sell myself at the at the best and we talked (laughs) a little bit on the arena the dating app arena in general so they understand and also what app they are going to towards because there are different apps there are fast ones there are slow ones and depending a little bit on your age and your personality you should go to different apps and you should know which one you should choose and I know that so sometimes they come to me for advice this is one hour coaching or yes it is this yeah. is a quick fix yeah but as soon as you come to me for coaching it can never be a quick fix it's mm-hmm. a program yes. yeah yeah that's good that's smart that's very smart because mm-hmm. um I think that it's important because of all the different work that they have to do to lay the foundations in them in, in understanding and recognizing themselves Um, yes and in the right you know steps yeah we can we cannot we always need to start with the attachment there is just no other way around and and to to grasp attachment style and then we can start to look at love maps and the patterns or the fears or the control or Mm -hmm. and then it comes to the needs and people don't know what they need they are more focusing on what their partner needs yeah 
uh, also on the dates, I, how can I get this person to like me? How can I go to the dates and be likable? And I said, why should you be likable on the dates? You know, why, why is it about the other person? Just go there and be curious. Who are you? Or what can you add to my life? Yeah. So yeah, it's a conversation. It's, it's a conversation, getting... dialogue. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm, and and also nice. building a feeling more than a CV. Mm, if I yeah. date you, I, we are creating a feeling and an emotion much more than, how many cats do you have? How many countries did you travel to? What is your journey in, in work life? I want to build, a, create some, the first moment we have, the first day, the first hour is about this feeling. And then we come to compatibility and mm. connection and chemistry. It's just a little bit, you know, like mm. 15 minutes later in, in the conversation. <laughs> right. It doesn't yeah. have to start with that. <laughs> uh, I, w- I want to yeah. add something that you just said. You said the word CV and for the, um, there may be Americans, CV means uh, resume. Basically, it's your resume. Sure. Sorry. Yes. No, that's, that's okay. I just want to, I just want to capture it so that people can understand what the word meant. Um, yeah. I think that, uh, I think it'd be fun to be like a little fly on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> on some of yeah. your people's dates <laughs> and I know that I there's know that sometimes I'm a, because I'm in the pocket sometimes like uh like hitch I'm sometimes the, they go for advice during the dates so I'm a little bit the uh, red button <laughs> so they go into the bath and they're like I'll be right back Aww. yeah FaceTime me and then wow. they talk to me and they go back yes that's really nice that you make yourself available like that I do because they need it sometimes sometimes I, I'm not doing it because I can, I have done this for so many years. I know what people kind of need mm. and I'm not there to make them weaker, but mm. I'm also there to build the confidence. If they yeah. need it a couple of times, sure, we do that. I can see and I know, but then I need to withdraw somehow. This is what everything is about is that when the program is done, mm-hmm. I'm not needed anymore. Mm. So. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, it's like your children, like you got to let them fly. And that's yes. how they get their confidence <laughs> also. Yes. Oh, yes. So nice. yes. Yeah. And that if it's not true. that partner, then it'll be the next partner because I just keep getting baby steps, baby steps, getting stronger and stronger. It's a numbers game. Anyhow, dating is a numbers game. Mm. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, it is. Somehow it is. You know, you need to be pragmatic, yeah. but it's a numbers game. Yeah. Of Which course. I think is also kind of, it takes pressure off. Right. I mean, if you say it's a numbers game of, okay, well, you may have to go out with 15 people before you find somebody that you want to go on a second date with, or you want to bring home to your parents or whatever. I mean, it's, it also, it's not like, um, I expect to be in love by my first date. No, uh, and it will not knock on your door and there will not be thousands. You know, if there are thousands of butterflies and it's like a really passion and fire at the first meeting, you know, this really, really mm-hmm. cool chemistry that we all adore and love but what do you do when that is not there anymore it lasts for one and a half year at the most this is chemicals in our brain when we are really in love and this passion is hardcore but if there is no compatibility it will die Hmm. after one and a half when the cocktail is over in our head Hmm. so if we are looking for only the dopamine kick and this fire yeah, you can do it, but it will not last. So mm. I always say, maybe you should look for that fire in some way. Go bungee jump or something, you know. <laughs> but but in a real serious relationship, that fire cannot last. Mm. It cannot last. It's impossible. Yeah, I think that it's uh, it's interesting <laughs> to see because it does change. I mean, everything changes, right? It's like the ebb and flow. Sure. That's, that's life. Yes. That is yes. life. And ultimately, it's if you... Uh, love and respect yourself and you love and respect your partner then you grow hopefully together yeah mm. yeah mm. but mostly of my clients get bored then because they love this that this feeling enormous feeling yeah so they hunt this all over and all mm. over this is the mm. pattern and that is why every relationship is lasting about a year mm. <laughs> you know yeah yeah so, well i mean yeah. that's the that's the need for everything to happen right now and then you yeah. get it and then it dies and then it's okay next yes that's, there's and- the transaction and then, yes, there is a transaction. Mm-hmm. Sure. Good, mm. yes. <laughs> so there yeah. it is. My goodness, I can't believe we've been talking as long as we have already. I think this is so interesting because I've never, I've never spoken to a dating coach. <laughs> mm. I mean, ever, no, like I've never, even, out of all the coaches that I've met, I have never met a dating coach. You're the first one. Yes, and I, when I 
became a dating coach, it was because to me, when I was single after the divorce from my, uh, from the dad, from my children, I lived with him for 10 years and I was like kind of in the game after that divorce. So I played the, my sex card really like in the four years, upcoming years, I played the sex card, which what I mean with that is I never got Anyone could not see me in the deepness. I only mm. showed them the sexiness and the flirtiness. So I was fun to be with. There was a lot of sex. But then four years later, when I wanted something serious, I still played the sex card. And I still got the men that only wanted to have sex with me. And I could not understand mm. why, why is this happening? Why does nobody want me for a girlfriend? What is happening here? And I couldn't see it. So I searched for dating coach. Hmm. to help me find out what is happening because it was not wrong with me of course mm -hmm. it was wrong with all the men yes of course I know all the men <laughs> I totally yeah. understand <laughs> all the men and I couldn't find I couldn't find a dating coach who could help me see what's wrong what was wrong with the men and then I started, <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then I started this 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 is how this grew isn't that yeah. funny the seed yeah I love here yeah. I love finding out the seed of how people start businesses I just think it's fascinating yeah well, I think that's and, um, I, and I know today why. <laughs> so trust me, I know why. So yeah, it's good. Do you want to share? No, but it was for me just to, to realize the sex card wasn't enough. If you want someone to love you and see you as interesting, you cannot only show one side of you. Mm -hmm. You need the safe card. You can play the clown. You can play the sex card. You can play the therapist. You can be the listener. Uh, the, the interviewer, you can be all of those kinds of characters when it comes to getting someone's interest. But if you show only the one side, mm. that is what you will get. So yeah, if you're a right. therapist, that is what you will get. You need to show more mm. sides of you. Mm. And I didn't. So it was kind of easy, but I didn't know it back then. I think that's really cool. That's uh, that's that's an interesting little note to leave it on. It's it's interesting because we started our conversation before we hit the record button on something similar of where you you know we attract we attract what we are giving right. There's something in yeah. the um, energetics of you know what you what you look for you're gonna find <laughs> what you look for you're gonna get. So now uh, that you've understood yourself and your actions and the energy that you were putting off, even though it was old energy, you know, it takes some time. It takes a little bit of time and, and we need help. And I think that's terrific that you you went outside and looked for a coach <laughs> to kind of help you along the way. And I think that's um, that's important that people understand that there are coaches that can help with this. You don't have to try to figure it out on your own. You don't have to get all the advice from your best friends telling you what to do on your dating, you know, your dating search because they've only got their experiences that there's professionals yeah. like you that can help them. I think that's really nice. Yes. Yes. It's professional. Nice. And I think if you go only to friends, friends are projecting their happiness towards you so what makes them happy often they think makes you happy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so they they only mean well but mm -hmm. sometimes you need to figure it out you need to break it down with someone professional and it doesn't matter in what area we are in business mm -hmm. love whatever you know mm -hmm. we need we need help sometimes yeah. to do that oh yeah yeah, yeah. We sure do. We sure do. All right. Do you have any last minute tips or thoughts or feelings about anything that you would like to share with my listeners today? I think the most important thing is what we said before is that we take the focus away from our ego. Hmm. So if we just do that and not focus on how to get someone's attention or to get this this dopamine and, and this confirming from other people and we, if we can do that for ourselves we will also be much more attractive to other ones mm -hmm. because this will show in your energy so kill the ego i would say <laughs> kill the ego yes i don't know yeah. if you may not even be i don't remember if you believe in god or anything but i've always my girlfriend told me that ego stands for edging god out and I was like, oh, I've been holding on to that for so many years, like edging God out. Because if we, <laughs> if we don't, um, if we're putting ourselves like, you know, there's, there's, there's good things. There's nothing wrong. I don't think with ego, but when it rules our lives, when it runs us, 
then it yes. becomes a problem like anything exactly <laughs> like anything. Yeah, yeah yes exactly that mm -hmm. the focus that we need this confirmation from others mm -hmm. we cannot be loved by everyone mm -hmm. and there is a really nice saying that i think every coach uses i think i don't know but mm -hmm. many coaches use this one in in the love arena and that is that a rejection is just a redirection Mm -hmm. So rejection is a redirection. It's not that you are rejected because you're not good. It's just that you two are not combined or mm -hmm. you are in a place in life. The timing is just not right. Maybe attachment is not right. It's just a redirection. So then what is coming next? Who knows? But if you can see it like that, you don't feel I'm not good enough because of course you are. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you are good enough. We all are. Yeah. We all are. Thank you. Thank you so much for today. You were an interesting and amazing little interview. I loved it. I loved it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your story too. I appreciate you openly sharing from your perspective, not just clients, but your own story. Um, because mm -hmm. that takes that takes a lot of strength and courage. And I appreciate that. Yeah, so thank you for having me. Mm, thank you. Thank you. All yeah. right. So you're going to send us some tips and some links of maybe um, some places that people can get some information on what we discussed. And that would be terrific. And then maybe we can have you back one day. I would love it. I would love to have. Yes, of course. <laughs> so much to learn. We've got so much to learn about love, don't we? We mm. do. Yeah. Even I. Yeah, well, <laughs> we all do. We all do. We're yeah. all we all have room to grow, don't we? <laughs> yeah all right thank you so much for today i appreciate it i appreciate your time thank you thank you bye-bye <laughs>